Hello, and thank you for joining us for our final part four four of financial investment strategies and tips and suggestions. Today in this video, we're going to be covering why we believe investing in the Zimbabwe and Zimbabwe as a country is a good idea. Before we get started, please do like and follow, subscribe to the channel. It does help us grow. And as always, I'm not a financial advisor. This is not constituted as financial advice. We're just sharing tips and information from very solid sources so that you can take advantage during this critical time and season that we find ourselves. So there are several reasons why we believe investing in the Zim, uh, Zim bonds and Zimbabwe as a whole are good ideas. Understanding that just like other currencies, it's not for everyone. We're, we're looking to the people that are faith-based, who have a vision, who can contend for things that not everybody else can. We're speaking to that audience specifically, whether that's people who have been around a while or are newbies to the wealth transfer. Uh, this is a faith-based blessing and an investment. So please understand that up front as a disclaimer. With that said, we're going to give you the top six reasons why we believe the Zim bonds in the country are a great investment. Number one, did you know that the king and queen of England, regardless of what we know about them, uh, back in 20, 2008 to 2013, they invested their own monies and the people's monies, of course, into the Zim and the bonds respectively, because they knew the power of it way back when. Uh, even though the bonds have been sanctioned off, uh, we're going to get into that in a little bit. So just bear with us. We're going to cover a lot of ground. Number two, Zimbabwe has the most gold in the world, indisputably. I've touched on this on many shows. We pointed to the facts. They have trillions of gold above ground, and they have 132 metric tons below ground. Um, this makes them the undisputed number one champion of gold in the world. They are literally the breadbasket to the world. Uh, they have been prominent throughout history, uh, going back to the times of uh, the Old Testament Ethiopia, uh, where they would pay uh, uh, sacrifices and offerings in gold and silver. So they've always had a rich history of robust amounts of metals and other things that we'll get into in a second. Number, uh, number three, um, agriculture. They have rich, fertile soil for crops, lush landscapes, and waterfalls. Contrary to the impoverished narrative that the fake news has posted to the world to make people think they're poorer than they really are. They also have many other um, uh, crops and attributes, uh, natural resources in the ground, specifically uh, platinum, diamonds, and chrome, not to mention ivory. Even though in many cases it's been outlawed, they still have very valuable resources that the world desires to have. Also, their mining sector has been a significant contributor to the country's overall blessing and economy, and it continues to offer lucrative investment opportunities for those who are seeking that. Number four reason, excellent timing. Timing is everything. Despite Zimbabwe's past inflationary issues and rampant corruption, just like the rest of the world, Zimbabwe is very pro-business, they have a ready built-in infrastructure, a strong supply chain, and a reliable workforce that make it very attractive to invest there. And I would say number five and six might be the most arguably important points throughout this entirety of this discussion. Number five, Nelson Chamisa, we've talked about him as well. He is a strong God-fearing leader who is ready to return his country to prominence. He is a native of Zimbabwe. He is the people's choice for president. He was asked by Chi on the Republic side, not the CCP to run. It's a very important distinction that we need to make, which is why we're touching on it. Elections for Zimbabwe, by the way, are set for August 20th. But just like here in America and many other countries throughout the world, most likely they will be preempted uh, and be done early ahead of schedule. Number six, excellent resources in terms of livestock, farmers, water sourcing, gold and trading routes that run and interconnect along the Indian Ocean. So they have great partnerships with neighboring countries who work together. That is obviously a very good attribute to have when you're in a country, when you're interconnected to other areas that contribute and work to the benefit and well-being of your country and vice versa. Also a very important touch point. We need to discuss something here that I want to pull up and for you. I'm going to read it directly. So it's not my words, it's, this is from Webster's Dictionary. 
it says on the Zim bonds, payable to the bearer of note on demand. You've seen on shows I've done with Nick Benyam and other places where we've circled in the presentation what it says on the note, specifically the 2008 AA series, okay? So that means possessions nine tenths of the law. Who's ever holding the bond is holding it. Now, let's break something down for you folks because I get this question a lot and that's why we're baking this into the discussion. Oftentimes you folks ask me, what is the difference between a bond and a note. Okay, so here's the deal. A bond, this is according to Webster's Dictionary, a bond is a debt issue to the public who buy the bonds. A note is a debt arrangement between the country and a bank, financial institution. Okay, so the term bonds and notes are used interchangeably, meaning there is no legal or lawful difference between them. So Right now, these Zim bonds are perceived to be worthless because there's nothing backing them, just like the U.S. dollar, no discernible difference. However, when Chamisa returns, he has already promised in writing to return his country back to a gold standard because they have the gold so they can stabilize their Zim bonds and dollars in said gold, which is going to return out of the ashes the Zim bonds because they're part of the new financial mechanism. Everything that once was returns. So the, the, the answer to the question is, it's semantics. There's very little difference between a bond and a currency, other than the fact that a bond is tied to the government, currency is tied to the bank. Both of them aren't backed by anything and will be. So that's, I'm just trying to give it to you in very short, you know, succinct points, which most of you appreciate. So those are some pretty compelling reasons why we believe that investing in the Zim bonds are a good idea. And for more information, feel free to visit the links within the description box. Thanks for listening. We'll be back with more videos like this on uh, future currencies that some of you have asked for more information. We thank you for your time. Have a great day.